Well, Shalom, Shalom. This is your sister, Sarah Nevaeh, coming at you with a new video. And I want to take some time to really talk to you about something that's on my heart and ask you a question. And that question, I hope, will open up the doors of your mind and your heart to ask yourself some questions and more importantly, to find an answer that aligns with the will of the Most High for your life. Let's go ahead and get into some prayer and then we're going to jump right in. Most High, I give you all praise, glory, and honor. I thank you for this day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Almighty King of kings and Lord of hosts, Father, I ask you to open up my lips and let nothing but truth from your Torah come forth. Father, let that truth be found, reaching the ears and the hearts of those that need to hear and to receive. And Father, I pray that it's planted in their heart and that it takes root and that it will do that which will bring glory and honor to you, O Most High. Father, I pray that it will cause some to grow up and, and stretch out and move closer in relationship with you. I pray that for myself as well, Father, because I received this first. And so, Father, I thank you for all that you're doing, all that you're going to do. Let this word be a blessing to all that hear. In your blessed name, Jehovah, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the great and mighty Yah. Hallelujah. 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 Bless his holy name. Okay. So, yeah, this is uh, something that I really feel like the Most High has put on my heart to share. And really, basically, it's a question. And here is the question. Are you peculiar? I want you to think about that for a minute. Are you peculiar? Do you know what that means? And if you if you do, do you know how to apply that to your life? Let's go ahead and look at some scripture. Let's talk about this because I think this is very important as we look at what does it really mean to be peculiar, a peculiar people unto the most high God. Turn with me, if you will, to Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19. And we're going to begin at verse 3. And it says, And Moses went up unto, unto Jehovah, excuse me, unto Elohim, and Jehovah called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shall thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then he shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people from all the earth, for all the earth is mine. Let's stop there for a minute. I thought this was really interesting. I can tell you I've read this so many different times, but there was one word in this that jumped out to me. No, it wasn't peculiar. I know that's probably what you were thinking, but the word that jumped out to me, especially in verse five was then. That's right, then. It says, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Then, T-H-E-N. You can't get to a place of being peculiar for the most high until something happens before that. And we see that right there in the verse, because before the word then, this is what it says. It says, now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then. So obeying his voice and keeping his covenant leads us to becoming that peculiar treasure, that peculiar person, that peculiar people that he points out. This is what the Most High wants us to do. For us to be able to be the people he's called us to be. It starts with obeying his voice. It starts with keeping his covenant. But there's something else he says. Let's look at verse six. He says in verse six, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou spake unto the children. Thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So the Most High is telling Moshe, he says, listen, I want you to go. I want you to tell the people that I look at them or will see them a certain way, a peculiar people. I will see them as a nation of priests, a, a holy nation of priests. But it starts with something very simple. 
hearing and obeying. Hearing what I've told you to do and carrying it out. Being committed to the covenant that I've made with you as my people. This is what it takes for us to be a peculiar people, but that's where it starts. It's real easy to say hear and obey, but sometimes we have to dig down and get down to the, the simple things. Um, there is a saying, I don't know who wrote it, but it's something I've come to really love and, and I say it very often. The essence of brilliant, the essence of simplicity, excuse me, the essence of brilliance is simplicity. Things that are typically brilliant are very simple. And I just love how simple the most high brings his word to us. If we dig down in it, we can find the simple things in it. And then we know it has to be brilliant because it comes from our God, our King, our Lord, our Savior, our great and mighty one who sits high and who looks low. Hallelujah. Okay. So now let's look at something else here. So what does it mean to be peculiar? What does the word itself mean? Well, here's some things that I wrote down. It says, to be strange, odd, uncommon. I like that, uncommon. Unusual, extraordinary, exceptional, unique, and special. And here's two additional meanings that really jump off the page for me. Here's the first one. Distinctive in nature or character from others. Let me say that again. Distinctive in nature or character from others. That means we stand out. That, that's another definition for holiness. It can be. You can also be distinctive in nature and character from others and be unholy. But that's not what the Most High has called us to be. He's called us to be a holy people, distinctive and in nature and in character unto him. And from everybody else, we separate. We don't look like they do. We don't act like they do. We don't walk like they do. We don't talk like they do. And I'm going to get into that in a little bit. Here's another one, another meaning, a definition of peculiar that really stands, off, uh, stands out for me. A property or privilege belonging exclusively or characteristically to a person. Let me say it again. A property or privilege belonging exclusively or characteristically to a person. You know why that really just blesses me? Because I am the property that belongs exclusively to the most high God. I am the one who has the privilege to pursue the character of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a character that he has said is obtainable through his, through his Torah. There is something about that that is amazing. That lets you know how much we are to stand out, stand separate and away from anything that is contrary or that is opposite of our God. And our God is what? Holy. So anything unholy, we should not be connected to. We should not be a part of. We should not run with. We should not be in league with because he's called us to a higher level of living. Hallelujah. So let's look at another scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 14. Deuteronomy chapter 14. And here in Deuteronomy chapter 14, here's what it says in verse 2. For thou art a holy people unto Jehovah thy Elohim, and Jehovah hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. I love that. So he tells us that we are not to be like anybody else, but more importantly, we are to stand out and to be above all the other nations of the earth. We are to partake of the things that he he calls clean, and we are to refrain from the things that he calls unclean. And that's where we get into thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. Now, I know because we have some Christians that listen to our videos. And I know that for those of you who or even Messianics who still believe that it is okay to eat of anything and to pray over it and then eat it, because this is what is taught in the New Testament. Um, I believe it's... Um, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, somewhere in, in there, uh, chapter 4, verse 4 and 5, 
chapter four, verses four and five. Yes. And this is where he, um, Paul basically says um, something along the lines. Let me just go ahead and turn to that real quick because I want to read that. Um, it, it, and it's just, it, <laughs> it's amazing to me that, I, and I know this because I, I, I lived up under this. I, I, you know, I taught this. It's okay if you pray over something in the name of God, you are all right to go ahead and partake of it, you know? And, um, and so let's look at that real quick. It says, uh, let's see, I think that is, let's see, is that first Timothy four? Yes. Here we go. I'm going to start at verse three. Uh, so first Timothy four, verse three, it says forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Okay. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Okay. Now let's first of all back up and let me reread a little portion of verse three there. Okay. It says, we're forbidding to marry and command, commanding to abstain from meats which God have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. First of all, <laughs> what Paul was talking about was not the swine or any of the foods that the Most High told us in the Old Testament was things that we were we are to refrain from or we are not to eat. They didn't even look at those things as food to consume, at least not the Hebrew people. They didn't look at those as food, as things to consume. So it's likely, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to step out here and give, and, and give Paul the benefit of the doubt. It's likely that he was talking about some of the things that these non-Hebrew folks that he was preaching to were bringing and offering as, as sacrifices or had offered for sacrifice unto other gods. And he was probably saying, you can pray over that stuff and still consume it. But certainly not things that the Most High has said thou shalt and thou shalt not eat. Now, if in fact he was referring to the things that the Most High has said thou shalt and thou shalt not eat, then we have a problem. And here's the problem, and I'm going to show you that problem. Let's look at, um, turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2. And I know so many of my Hebrew brothers and sisters know exactly where I'm going. But Deuteronomy 4 and 2 says something very plain. And remember what I talked about? Very simple. Here's what it says. It says, Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of Jehovah your Elohim, which I command you. So there's no adding to his word. There's no taking away from his word. Paul was a man. I don't care how anointed of a man he may be. He may have been. <laughs> Moses was anointed. Uh, Aaron was anointed. I'll say Aaron was anointed. Let me, let me correct that. Aaron was anointed. David was anointed. These men had oil poured upon them. They were anointed. Uh, Moses was called to do a work unto the Most High. Elijah, all of the prophets who moved and, and operated in a way that only God can move and operate through someone, they all were given a certain a, a privilege and honor to do certain things in the name of the Most High. But none of them had the right to change the word of God. And Paul does not have that right. So if Paul was talking about you can eat your pork and you can eat your shellfish and you can eat, you can eat any kind of fish you want out of the sea, Paul was wrong because that goes against the word of the Most High. More importantly, we don't even see Paul saying, thus saith the Lord. So Paul was a man. Oh my goodness, I didn't mean to spend so much time on this, but I want to say this again. Paul was a man who is subject to fail, falls short. The scripture says a righteous man even can fall seven times, but he'll get back up. Well, guess what? Paul was a man and it is possible if he did relate that to, to the people that it was all right to eat whatever they want. He was a man who was falling short and he was definitely outside of the word of the most high. So I want to say this. 
Are you peculiar? I want to ask you, are you peculiar? Because a peculiar person unto the most high, we're going to do what thus saith the Lord. I don't care how, what title someone has. I don't care what position they have. I don't care what sign or wonder they do. I don't care how well they prophesy. It's all about what thus saith the Lord. Because if they prophesy and their prophecy goes against the word of God, <laughs> then you are not to receive them. And what Paul is saying here brings confusion to many. It makes people question. People think it's okay. Oh, well, my mom and my grandmama, she ate this and ate that, and they lived to be this long and that long. That's just the grace of the most high. But there's plenty of our people who are eating these things, and they're turning up in graves early, catching these cancers and all these different things. So we have to be mindful. And listen, it's really hard to navigate anyway out here because, you know, we know that it's possible that pork could get into pork, uh, you know, be it oils or whatever, could get into something that we are, um, that we partake of unknowingly. But to knowingly go and no, we, we don't want to do that. So if you are, you got to ask yourself a question. How do I align with something that goes completely against what the Most High has commanded. And think about the fact that the Most High said, thou shall not add to his word and you shall not take away from his word. Hallelujah. Okay, let's move on. Because being peculiar comes with a lot of responsibility. And I know that for me, it is always interesting when I get something from the most high that I have to go and sit down and say to myself, okay, you gave this to me to share, but you gave this to me for me first. Where in my walk am I not being peculiar? And that's the question. Where can I come up higher? Where can I, where can I separate myself unto you most high so that I am uh, truly one that you look upon and you are, you gaze upon and say, there is my daughter, there is my son, there is the one that truly is, is, is after me, loves me, and is obedient. Why? Because that one obeys my voice and is keeping the covenant. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 26. We're in Deuteronomy a lot today. Deuteronomy 26 verse 18. Deuteronomy 26, verse 18. Here's what it says. And Jehovah have avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people as he had promised thee, and that thou shouldest keep all his commandments, and to make thee high above all nations which he have made in praise and in name and in honor, that thou mayest be a holy people unto Jehovah thy Elohim, as he hath spoken. So we are to be a holy people unto him. We are to be a people that when we talk, when we walk, when we move, when we do whatever we do, we do it different. We are not we don't look like everybody else. We don't try to be like everybody else. I mean, this is very important. And it's it can be difficult in a society that pulls on people to be a part of a trend that is going a, in a certain direction or to, to, to be a part of a, of a flow that, that says, if you're not with this flow, then you are going against the, the grain. You're going against the current. And, and that's just not acceptable. Well, you know what? When you choose to be holy, when you choose to keep the commandments of God. I, I, listen, I, and I'm, ta I'm talking about keeping the commandments that the Most High told us to keep, not what Paul added, not what Paul took away, what the Most High commanded. When he said, keep his Sabbath day and keep it holy, when he, he, he told us to eat a certain way, when he told us that we are to wear fringes on the four corners of our garment. Listen, I have to remember every time I'm like, oh my goodness, I got to get my fringes, wear my fringes. I, I'm, I'm practicing it. I'm doing it so that I can be found right in his sight. Do I fall short? Yes, I got out, went out the other day. I was like, oh my goodness, I forgot my fringes. And sometimes I'm just like, come on, you got to get on the ball. You got to do this. You got to make sure you remember because I want to do right in his sight. I fall short sometimes. We all do. But the goal is to get up and keep moving. Get up, keep studying. Get up, keep asking for his help, asking for his spirit to help you to do that which is pleasing in his sight.
Now, I'm going to talk about something that I know I'm not going to get a lot of amens about. And I'm talking to my Hebrew brothers and sisters because I, I just can't understand it personally. And um, I guess I'm a little convicted of it because I found myself uh, recently something I did along these lines that totally shocked me when it came out my mouth. And I thought, oh my goodness, yeah, I, I, I got to work on that because that is not something that I do. And what I'm talking about is, remember, being holy, being peculiar means we do not function like everybody else. We are not common. We are uncommon. We are peculiar. We are we are special. So we don't function like everybody else. We're not we're not down with the masses. We don't go with the trendsetters. We are trendsetters that are going in the opposite direction, the direction that leads to holiness, righteousness, and becoming a part of what is known as a remnant of people that is pleasing in the sight of the most high. So my big deal was this cussing, this, this foul language that I see so many of our Hebrew brothers and sisters use. And I, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the ones that don't know that are not woke. I'm talking about the ones who are saying that they live for the most high, they pursuing holiness or pursuing righteousness, living according to the law. And I've even heard some give excuses as to why it's okay for them to use foul language. And as I meditate on this, the most high dropped something. I mean, he like did a download in my spirit and gave me something to ask. For those of you who think that you as a um, holy pursuit, one who pursues holiness and righteousness and living according to the law, feel that it's okay to use foul language. Here, here's, here's what I want to ask you. How can we call ourselves, who call ourselves holy, how can we who are, are chasing after or who say we hunger and thirst or want to go after holiness, use words that the world, that the ungodly, that the wicked even say is ungodly? I mean, the wicked calls foul language foul. They say it's foul. And yet I see Hebrews who are truly thinking it's okay to use foul language. How can you approach somebody about this way of life using foul language and they get upset when they don't want to talk to you? They don't want to, they shy away from you. They pull away from you because you using some, you talking to them in a way that they find offensive. And then Somehow you think that that, that that makes it okay for you to further call them names or further go off on them. No, 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 no. We are not supposed to be like the world. So if the world, and when I say the world, I'm talking about those who are outside of the covenant, those who have no knowledge of the covenant, those who don't know about the law, those who don't know how to live according to the law. We are not supposed to identify with something that they call ungodly, unrighteous, and foul, and make it a part of our our buffet, so to speak. No, it, it doesn't work. You can't have that two ways. That just does not align. And as you can see, I'm very passionate about it because recently I was watching something and it was so shocking, this little video I saw, that I actually, out of my mouth, I started, I, st I said a cuss word I ain't said in years. And I thought, where did that come from? And I had to check myself. Wait a minute. Hold on. Where did that come from? And, and, and I think maybe it was so a little wake up call, a little tap on the shoulder to say, I needed you to be aware of it. It's, it's, it can be in you just like it's in so many others. But you need to say something because it's been something that's been on my heart and on my mind. I, I've had sisters that I've um, discussed this with who use a lot of foul language. And I've made a statement of saying, why do you need to talk that way? And they literally got offended and made excuses for using that language and felt that it was okay. And in the same breath, a saying that, you know, that, that they are who they claim to be, Israel. Well, if you're Israel, then you are, if you're Israel and you know it, then you should be pursuing a lifestyle that goes contrary, opposite of that in which everybody else is operating and functioning. So the way we talk is not the way everybody else talks. The way we walk is not the way everybody else walks. Let's look at another scripture along those lines. 
But let's look at Psalms chapter 1. We all know Psalms chapter 1. And if you don't, well, you get ready to hear about it because it's a it's an excellent way of opening up a beautiful, uh, some beautiful writings. I love the Psalms. I don't know too many people who don't. Um, and this particular verse or um, Psalm, it, it just in the first two verses, it speaks volumes. Here's what it says. Blessed is the man that walketh not. Blessed is the man that walketh not. So you want to be blessed, you got to walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of Jehovah, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. So we have to practice meditating. I, I was saying to someone recently, I said, you know, I've got to get better at, pre at meditating like I used to. I, I, I've fallen away from it. I've had so many things coming at me over the last couple of years and pulling on me. And I had to recognize that. I said, wait a minute, hold up. I got to get back to having the most high on my mind day and night, keeping his word ever on my mind, always on my lips. So that when things come at you, if the first response is his word, the first response out of your mouth is his word. Otherwise, you can flip script and come up with something that you you don't even know okay, where, where did that come from. So this is one of the reasons why we meditate on the word. But more importantly, one of the reasons why we are, we have to be mindful of who we fellowship with, who we align ourselves with, who we walk and talk with. So I ask you again, are you peculiar? Are you peculiar? That's the question. Here's another scripture. Let's look at Numbers chapter 16. Numbers chapter 16, I, I, um, I always find this story just amazing. First time I read it, I about fell off the, I remember years ago, first time I read this, I was just like, are you for real? Man, this is deep. Okay, so Numbers chapter 16, remember I'm talking about how we walk, how we talk, how we move, how we interact with others and who we align ourselves with. Are we aligning ourselves with people that help us to be the peculiar people or nation or holy priest that the Most High has called us to be, are we aligning ourselves with people who are not? So let's look at Numbers chapter 16, verse 23 is where I'm going to begin reading. And I'm going to read it quite a bit here. But listen to this, and when you get a chance, go back and read it because it's good. And Jehovah spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from a about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abram. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they got, got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abram, on every side, and Datham and Abram came out and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that Jehovah has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then Jehovah have not sent me. But if Jehovah make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertaineth unto them, and they go down quickly into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked Jehovah. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground came asunder that was under them. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appertained appertained unto Korath and all their goods. And they and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit and the earth closed upon them and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. For they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. And there came out a fire from Jehovah and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. Hallelujah. So for those of you who don't know the story, basically Korah, Datham, and Abram, if I'm saying it correctly, <laughs> these three men basically went against Moses. What they basically said, and I'll just put it in today's lingo, is 
Oh, you think you all of that, Moses? You think you're the only one that's anointed around here? Listen, God can use any of us. We all are a part of his um, you know, uh, his, we all have part of Israel. We all his sons. So you come around and you want to, uh, us to feel like uh, we supposed to follow you and do what you want us to do. And this is interesting because it all came about after Moses had told the people that the most high commanded them to put fringes on their four, on the four corners of their garment. And it was like, they like, what? Oh no, wait a minute. I hold up. Oh, hold up. Wait a minute. <laughs> so what happens is these men, started really basically dividing the people. And 250 men of renown, these were men who were respected, men who were perhaps considered wise and maybe had certain gifts and callings among the people, 250 of them aligned themselves with these three men who were provoking the most high. Because see, a lot of times when you're dealing with God's anointed, like Moses, you are dealing with him, with the most high himself. Touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm, the scriptures tell us. So here these men were touching God's anointed in some sense of the word. And I don't mean physically, but in the way they were coming against him. And I love Moses in this story because he drops to his knees immediately. If you go back and read the beginning, immediately he does what he always does. He dropped to his knees and began to intercede and pray for these men, pray for them. Please, y'all got to get it together. What are y'all doing? You know, most high, please. And several times, at least two times, the most high said, move out of the way that I may consume them, Moses. He was ready to just zap them and then be gone. But you no, know, the Moses kept in him and Aaron kept intervening with prayer and saying, please, please, please have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. And he did up until a point. So here's what happens. These men pursued and continued to do their thing. Moses gave them some instructions about what to do with some censors, some incense, and they followed through. And those who aligned themselves with it and did it too, guess what? They all went down as we read. And I love it because it reminds me of, I think, an old joke that um, I want to say Eddie Murphy or Richard Pryor, somebody said, you know, everybody died. Even the dog is like, why wow, I got to die? Everybody died. You know, it, it, it's a sad statement, but unfortunately, and I'm here to tell you, I believe that we're getting ready to see the same thing happen in this nation. And, and it's happening already. You have people who are sitting in places of power in this nation who are not righteous, who are not godly, and they are doing wicked things and saying wicked things saying untruths, not showing any mercy to the to the to the needy and to the poor, to the orphan and to the and to the widow and to those who come from far and, and come here looking for help. And guess what? There are people who are aligning those themselves with those individuals. They may not personally know them, but they're supporting them. They're saying yes about anything that they say. They're in agreement with them. And everything that this person or person, these person, these people do goes against the word of the most high. And guess what? These people who are aligning themselves with these wicked, ungodly people of power are going to find that when the ground opens up, however that may be, it's going to suck not only those people in power in, but it's going to take a lot of those folks with them. And it's unfortunate, but these people, they, they, they have their reasons for following after certain wicked people. But the scripture tells us in Psalms 1, do not walk with ungodliness. Don't convene with it. Don't, don't hang with it. Don't have any kind of arrangement with it. You want to walk upright in the sight of the Most High. And doing that means separating yourself so that you can be the peculiar person that he has called you to be. So with that said, I ask you the question again. Are you peculiar? Because I'll tell you the truth. I sure want to be. Shalom.